no matter how much words you say it's not enough to bless him so just bless him this morning let your heart give him praise this morning because he's worthy of our praise lord we worship you this morning we give you praise to god because you deserve it and much more in the name of jesus we have worshiped come on in the name of jesus we have worshiped hallelujah praise god so while we're still standing we're going to pray we're going to pray before you sit down we're going to pray so what are we going to pray about we're going to pray about this last quarter of the year you know at this time of the year people have taken stock they you know you're thinking from january to now what has happened what has not happened what's what's what result have i got what haven't i got you know we started praying this prayer the prayer due the last wednesday and the holy spirit won't let me let, let it go in me so we're going to pray it again this morning for those that were not there so we're going to pray for this last quarter of 2022 let me read you a scripture before we pray psalm 139 verse 16 he said you saw me before i was born every day of my life was recorded in your book every moment was laid out before a single day has passed so someone maybe you're wondering why maybe god doesn't know what to do about me no god has laid down all the days of your life including october to december 2022 so and you know, also all we need to do now is to appropriate it all right lift up low stretch forth your hand and take that which god has written concerning you in this last quarter say father in the name of jesus everything that you have written for me in this from october to december this last quarter of 2022 father everything you have written to do in me to do for me to do with me lord let them be accomplished in the name of jesus go ahead and begin to pray it out with the spirit if you can come on come on come on someone pray lay hold this morning some things will not happen until we pray things don't happen until we pray so go ahead open your mouth and begin to grab those things that are yours for the taking grab them grab them begin to talk to god say lord even me will not truncate it i will not stop it the devil will not stop it i will not stop the things you are planned to do with me for me and in me in this last quarter of 2022 the year is not over yet i tell you there's still 83 days left in this year and that's a long time for god to change your situation for god to do something with you for god to do something in you for god to do something for you in the name of jesus what it is you're believing for come on come on someone this morning whoa a few more seconds a few more seconds the kasataya baba ma rina rada moko sote ya baba ma in the name of jesus father we thank you because your word said all the promises in you are yes and amen therefore we thank you because we know you have heard us and the things we have prayed we have them even according to your word in the name of jesus amen all right, don't sit yet before we see. We're going to pray for Kingsworth Calgary as we do. Kingsworth Calgary is, um, is pastored by Pastor Muiwa Oseni. So we're going to pray for that church. Hold your hands together. Just join your hands with your neighbor, you know, as we do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Kingsworth Calgary. We pray for the set man in that place, oh God. Thank you because the fresh anointing is on him, oh God. Your anointing is always fresh where he's concerned. Thank you, oh God, because your, your, your power, your word, your wisdom is poured forth through him in the name of Jesus. And we pray for that church, oh God, that they will make impact, that there will be widely spread impact of Kingsworth Calgary in their location and beyond, in the mighty name of Jesus. Many lives will be touched because of that church in the name of Jesus. Lives will be changed and transformed because of Kingswell Calgary in the name of Jesus. Come on, someone pray in the spirit for a minute. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, O God, because that church is marching on and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear that amen louder? 
praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Let me welcome your neighbor to church. Say welcome. Where are the others? Ask them, where are the others? <laughs> Hallelujah. You're welcome to church. Uh, we thank God for this beautiful day he has made. We will indeed rejoice and be glad in it. All right, praise God. All right, first of all, Pastor is not here. For those that don't know, Pastor is on vacation, a much needed vacation. You know, the Bible says God created the world in six days, and the seventh day he took a rest. He rested. So our pastor needs to rest. Is that okay? All right. So he has, he's going to rest. He's, um, I think he'll be preaching in Kingswood, London this morning. Right about now, I think. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we wish him well. And we can't wait to, for him to be back. Praise God. So in the meantime, uh, we'll go on as we do. Praise the Lord. All right. So a couple of things before I go into the word. All right, we started a, a congregational evangelism. Um, all right, before I talk about that, the, the light issues, so the, um, some things are sparking at the back, I hear. So that's why we're having this uh, issue. So the screen might not come on and all that, but we're able to have something going on. So please don't be distracted by, by that. Let's just uh, go on. All right, so we started a, a congregational evangelism, uh, taught one, one man, five souls. I'm sure you have seen that on our, uh, on our WhatsApp platforms. So what does that mean? It means that we as a church, all of us, you know, nobody excluded, we are supposed to go out there, win at least a minimum. The five souls is not the maximum, it's the minimum. The minimum of five souls before the end of the year, you know. No, we just said in prayer that God, some things that God wants to do through you, this is one of them, all right? So God does not, so some people that is not only wanting to do things for you, there are some things he wants to do through you, all right? So this is uh, one of them. So go ahead, go out there, win five souls, a minimum of five souls. And when you get their names, get their numbers, and please uh, send them to Dikim Bosu, Dikim Bosu. We all know Dikim Bosu. So send them to, send it to, uh, the names to him. Uh, on his WhatsApp. If you don't have that, please find out. Or you can just write a list on a piece of paper and come and give it to him on Sunday. Praise God. All right. Okay. So also this week, there will be no midweek service uh, in our local assembly. So don't, no Tuesday midweek service. What we're going to have, or there will be a midweek service this week. What we're going to have is an impartation service with Dr. K. You know, all Lagos churches, we're going to be gathering at Cary Center. That is the headquarters church for our midweek service. And that will be 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. That's this Wednesday. So no midweek service Tuesday. We're going to have midweek service with Dr. K at 6.30 at Cary Center. Praise God. So let's all endeavor to be there. And then also tomorrow with Dr. K, he'll be having a meeting uh, with creative people. That's people in the entertainment industry and all that. So if you're, like, you're a singer, you're an actor, and so on and so forth. He wants to meet with those people tomorrow, tomorrow at Scary Center as well by 7 p.m. You are required to register. And the, the link is bit.ly forward slash you creatives okay uc creatives all right let me say it again because the screen is not there so um bit.ly forward slash uc creative that's up close creative i think because it said up close with creatives that's the theme of the meeting all right praise the lord and don't forget supernatural is around the corner supernatural is our annual convention and this one is a special one because it is our 25th anniversary, praise God, it's the 25th anniversary of the ministry. So it's going to hold uh, from 17th November to 20th November. So pass, uh, more information will be passed across as time goes on, praise God. All right, so uh, this morning we're going to look at um, the word of God this morning, we, and I pray that uh, that, that the Lord, you know, will 
transform somebody's life. Somebody's eyes will be opened. Someone will learn something new today. And, and someone will go out there tomorrow and become a better person, a better Christian, a more assured Christian. Praise God. All right, so on Tuesday, uh, Pastor Inca started a series. In this season, we're going to be looking at uh, the series, you know, uh, the subject of in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, okay? And um, he started on Tuesday. Actually, he started at Grace Culture, praise God. He started at Grace Culture, where we have, we've learned that Christ is our mediator. So in Christ, we have a mediator, okay? That's, that's, a, that's one of the things we have in Christ. And on Tuesday, Pastor Yinka, you know, you know just uh, ran through some things about about Christ and the things we have in Christ. So this morning, I want I want to start. Um, I want to I want us to look at a couple of some scriptures talking about in Christ. Um, you know, unfortunately, the, the screen is not on. So please, I want to encourage you. Look at the scriptures as we go. Write them down. Write them down. Because we are talking about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and so on and so forth. And if you don't know it, which is the problem of a lot of believers these days, the life is not maximized. The Christian life becomes frustrating. It becomes not fun. It becomes not good. It becomes not desirable. But because we are ignorant of some of these things that we have in Christ, praise God. So if you have your phone, I believe that you should have your Bible app there. If you don't have Bible app, I wonder what you have inside your phone. Praise God. So I believe all of us have that. So please uh, go along with me as we go. So let's look at Colossians 2, 8 to 10. You know, so many scriptures about in Christ. I didn't know which one to zero down on, but the Holy Spirit helped me to zero down on this one. So Colossians 2, 8, 2, 8 to 10. He said, don't let, I'm reading from the NLT. He said, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ. I want you to note those phrases, in Christ, with Christ, through Christ, and all that. Keep note those phrases as we, as we go on. So, our union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority? You know, I can't wait for you to see this in the message translation. Let's go to the message translation. He said, watch out for people who try to dazzle you. We had a dazzle here some time ago. Praise God. All right. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spiritual beings. They shall complicate everything. They talk about different things. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him. In who? In Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in Christ so you can see and hear him clearly. So you can see and hear God clearly through Christ. So he said, you don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope. Let me stop there. You know, I've spoken to a couple of people in this assembly that talks about, they were talking about horoscope, you know, you are a Libya, a Libra or Libya, or you are a cancer. How can you call yourself that? You? So how can you say you're a cancer? You are Leo and you're, you just, you're dabbling with devilish stuff. Praise God. So the Bible is telling us you don't need a horoscope, all those things, to realize the fullness of Christ. And the emptiness of the universe without, without him. When you come to him, that fullness comes together. Hallelujah. When you come to him, that fullness comes together for you too. Praise God. His power extends over everything. Everything. Whatever you can imagine. Whatever you can think of. His power extends over everything. Praise God. And the locus classicus for... 
us be the works Christ has done, being in new creations, is first second Corinthians 5 17. If any man be in Christ, is what a new creation, all things are passed away, and all things have become new. Like I said, I'm going to be reading a lot of scripture. Let the scriptures uh, you know, speak to us. So we can spend hours and hours and hours in scripture looking at all the things that Christ has done for us. All the things we have in him. You know, that those scriptures are called in Christ scriptures. In case you have not heard that before. That there are a lot of scriptures, you can see them a lot in the epistles, in the gospels. They are called in Christ scriptures. Scriptures telling you who you are in Christ. What's what you have in Christ, what has been done for you in Christ, and so on and so forth. So in, in the gospel, you see that you see them, you know, phrases like in him, in Christ, through him, with him, by his blood, also so and so and so on. So as you read scripture from today going forward, notice those things. And when you see it, those are the things he has done for you that you can lay hold on, you can appropriate. All right? Praise God. And in the Gospels, you can see he was, he was alive in the Gospels, so he was one speaking. We say, in me, you know, like he said, in me, in this world, you have tribulation, but what? In me, you have peace. So, why are you troubled, my brother, my sister? Jesus said that in me. How many of us are in Christ this morning? Okay, in case you're born, if you're born again, you're in Christ. Alright? So, if you're in Christ, so, what's the reason for the lack of peace? He said, in me, you have peace. Unless you are outside him, but you are in him. So you have peace. And things like you see, we say, in my name, with me, and all that, you know, all those are in Christ's scriptures. All right? Let's look at a couple more. First Corinthians 4. Sorry, First Corinthians 1 4. Paul was saying, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you. By Christ Jesus. So we have the grace of God because of what? Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 7. It says, In Him, again, look at it again. In Him. So what do we have in Him? So listen to what we have. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of grace. So where's the guilty conscience coming from? Where's the condemnation coming from? He said, in him, I have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So I don't have to carry around guilt anymore or condemnation. Praise the Lord. But like here, the problem is that a lot of believers don't know these things. You know, they've not paid attention to what you have in Christ. Romans 6, 23, popular one. He said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as, as new creations, which we have seen, we are new creations that, that Dr. K brought us that revelation, we never get old. How many of us have been believers for like 15 years here? Okay? You can see the gym gym people. Praise God. Alright, so after 15 years, you're still a new creation. That's what he's saying. You never get old. You are not an old creation because you have been in Christ for 20 years. No. A new creation is ever new. So as new creations, we have been saved from some things. Galatians 3.13 said that we have been redeemed from what? The curse of the law. We have been redeemed from the curse. We have been saved from the curse. That's one of the things we have been saved from. We have been saved into some things. Praise God. The Bible says in Colossians 1.30, it said that he has, who, who, he has delivered us, you know, from the power of darkness and did what? He conveyed us into the, into the kingdom of his son in love, son of his love, all right? So we have been moved from darkness into the kingdom of God, all right? Some people say, let dark things of darkness harass them. Praise God. I'm getting there. I'll get, I'll get there. I'll get there. Let me not get ahead of myself. All right. We have been saved into some things. We have been saved for some things as well. 
you know, we have been saved. We are not just, if, if after, after you got saved, God just wanted you to be saved, you know, after we got, some of us will not be here. Those who would have gave their life 50 years ago, they would have gone. They wouldn't be here. But that's not all that salvation brought. He has saved you for some things. So you need to know that. As a believer, you are saved for some things. You know, Ephesians, Ephesians 2.10. 2, he said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Created where? In Christ. Okay? When, when you got born again, all your life you may have been living anyhow, but when you got born again, you got created and you, you became a new creation like we have seen. So he created you for good works that he has prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. So as a believer, begin to find out what you have been created for. You're not just created for to just be a believer. No, there's something you're meant to be doing. Then we have been made some things. Come on, tell your neighbor you're made. You know, so in Nigeria, I went to, I think many places, say, you say, before you say you're made, you say $10 billion in your account. You say, ah, you're made. No, no, no. As a new creation, you are made. Come on, say to yourself, I am made. Praise God. So we have been made some things. Ephesians 1 6. He said, To the praise of his glory, of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Who was talking about love this morning? I know. Someone started talking about love this morning. We are accepted in the beloved. God accepts you. There's nothing you can. God, you know, I think it was Dickie Bosa, if I understood that, Robert, right? We're saying that God is not angry with us in the first service, all right? God can never be angry with you. There's a scripture, I can't remember where it is. It said, God has not appointed us to wrath. Never. You are accepted. You are loved and you are accepted. Why? Because you are what? In? Because you are in Christ. It's not because of what you do or what you don't do, but because you are in Christ. You have accepted that sacrifice. So you, have, you are accepted by God. Hallelujah. So all these things are called new creation realities. Someone said new creation, new creation realities. That your realities or they ought to be your realities. Okay? And I want to tell you, first of all, they should be your reality in your spirit. That they be your, your reality physically. All right? And all these things will become a practical reality for you by faith. Praise God. All these things are received and appropriated by faith. So this morning, when I saw the media flyer yesterday, you know, I just said, mm, okay. I think Holy Spirit, so I was, I was okay. I was glad that I believe that the Holy Spirit, what, what he asked me to share, you know, that it was a confirmation. They said, in Christ, you have made the righteousness of God, Right? That's what that flyer said. Praise God. So this morning, I want to talk about one of those things we have been made. You know, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Before someone say, oh, I know that. I've heard that. Please pay attention. You know, because to a lot of people, it's not about knowing. It's not about hearing. It's about being that thing. It's about it being your reality, like I talked about. I think it was Dr. K that was saying at Grace Culture that all these wonderful and beautiful and awesome things that Christ, that we have in Christ, a believer that does not understand that he has been made the righteousness of God can never maximize them. Praise God. You know, I remember when I gave my life to Christ. Honestly, I know I've been saying it a lot of times. I began to understand my my what i have in christ you know when i came to king's word okay where you go to church matters praise god and i tell you guys you are all blessed some of some of some people started early in king's word i didn't okay so you are in a, a place where you never measure up somehow you're running this race but you're running it with fear you know, you feel always that you're not, you're never enough. You're never accepted. And you're looking for some things to do so that God will accept you. 
you are trying hard, you are working hard, you are you know, doing something, but really, inside you, it's never there. And then the preacher is telling you Sunday after Sunday how you don't measure up, how you, you, know, how you have to do this, do that, do that. Praise God. You know, and we live like that for a long time without understanding this fact. That is the fact that you are made righteous in Christ. One of the scriptures where they say, say you are accepted. All right? So let's look at it. So first Corinthians, Second Corinthians 5.21. If you don't know any scripture about righteousness, you should know this one. For he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us that we might become, let me know if you are reading your scripture. We might become what? Some people are saying it from memory. Uh, <laughs> you know it before. So that we might become what? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God made him who knew no sin. How did, he make, how did that come about? I think we all know this story. In the garden of when God made man, he made him righteous. He was righteous. He had right standing. He could come before God, fellowship with God at any time. Until man lost something. He lost his identity. The devil deceived him. And he lost that righteousness. I know what, what blows my mind is that God didn't even task man to pay for that sin. Praise God. He's such a loving God. He didn't even task man to pay. He had to do it himself. Because sin must be punished. And he didn't want to punish man. So he said, okay, I will pay the price myself. And he did that through Jesus. And then, that death and resurrection, he paid the price. He, you know, claims of justice was met. He met it. Because like I said, sin must be punished. He met it. And that's how righteousness came to us. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is an empowerment that it makes a person in Christ, a person in Christ. Again, you know, like I said, look out for those words, those phrases, in Christ. That is a born again person, the person that's born again, to stand before God without any sense of guilt, condemnation, or inferiority. It is so basic that some people still miss it. Praise God. I remember in those days, before I became born again, I went to a denomination where they have things like penance. Some of us here might know what I'm talking about. So if you commit sin, you are as, you're expected to do some penance. And in some very serious, you know, in some very, well, it's not, I don't, not the word serious, I'm looking for the right word, in some places where that denomination it's, it's really practiced in, in depth. They do things as, as much as, you know, um, maybe having wounds on their bodies, trying to, you know, they can crawl on their knees from here for miles and miles just to pay for their sins. And it's so, it's so heartbreaking because Jesus has done all that. You don't need to do all that. What can you pay? He has paid it all. And they do that and so that they will feel that their sins, okay, I've paid for my sins enough. You know, after you do that, after you have hurt yourself, you know, I remember also in those days, when, when you do something, then personally, I will fast. If I ask God, so, you know, forgive me and all that, you know, so, I still don't feel forgiven. So I'll take three days or more to fast. You know, you know, just to, all that is trying to pay for your sins, okay? So I take three days to fast, you know, so that God will... Then after fasting, that fasting, and, you know, I, I now feel okay. I think he has forgiven me now. I can move on. And you know what? Before long, I might need to do that fast again. Praise God. So he said, you know, it wasn't, the Christian life wasn't an interesting life. It wasn't an enjoyable life. You know. But you know, the Bible says in John 10, 10, it said, I've come to give you life. And so you can have life. and have it what? More abundantly. He said, as I said, they have given us all things to do what? To enjoy. We're supposed to enjoy. I'm enjoying this life now. Praise God. Unlike before, I am enjoying it absolutely. And I hope you are. Why? Why am I enjoying Because of the things I now know. Praise God. 
So that right, right study, the righteousness of Jesus that you have, you know, is what makes you to stand before God, before God without any guilt. So they say, oh, pastor, do you mean, you know, when I teach KTI, I teach this uh, subject a lot in KTI. So please, if what I'm saying is sounding like Greek to you, please, KTI is starting this Saturday. Make sure you attend. It will be taught in depth. I just have a few minutes to do this. It will be taught in depth, okay? Where was I? I was saying something before I started talking about it. Okay, let's move on. It is what justifies us. Righteousness is what justifies us. To be justified is to me to make made right, to make acceptable, and so on and so forth. It gives us right standing with God. You know, just like a normal, you know, because these days they have abnormal fathers, abnormal mothers. So a normal, normal father, father and mother. No matter what you do, they will bring you close. They will hold you. They will accept you. How much more the father? Okay, no matter what you do. It's not those, please don't use your dad to judge father God. Oh, please. You say, you, from today, you're no longer, I disown you for whatever reason. God doesn't disown his children. Hallelujah. It is a gift received at new birth. That is where a lot of people have issues. Righteousness, this direction we're talking about, the day you gave your life to Christ, you know, I don't have anybody's head here, so imagine it is somebody's head. God just did like this, bam, and imparted you with that righteousness. It is what? A gift. Come on, say it's a gift. You didn't do anything to qualify for it. You didn't do anything to get it, and you're not going to do anything to lose it. It's that second part that gets a lot of people in a tangle. You didn't do anything to get it. All you did was to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And the follow come was righteousness, the Holy Spirit, and so on and so forth. All those things were imparted at new birth when you gave your life to Christ. So it's received when you gave it. It cannot be worked for or earned. So you cannot work for it or any. Therefore, you cannot. There's nothing you can do to as, lose it as well. Like I said, I have a little time. I know somebody's mind is working, and I don't blame you. When I began to hear things like this, I was wondering as well. Praise God. So this is not based on performance. It is available only as a gift. Romans 4.3. You know, quoted what was said in Genesis 15, 6. He said that Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him for what? What did Abraham do? He did what? He believed God. He didn't, it, the Bible said he worked uh, for anything. He said he believed God and it was accounted for him for righteousness. The same way today, when we believe and accept the finished work of Christ, we are, we are it's accounted for us for righteousness. Again, Romans 5, 17, it says something. For if because of one man's trespass, who is that man? Adam. So if because of Adam, death reigned through that one, much more surely would those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor. I'm reading the Amplified Classic. And the free gift of what? Righteousness. Again, look at that word. It is free. The free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. I want to know that word, that we are supposed to reign as kings. All right? So when I talk about what righteousness does, you know, it's one of the things I'm going to uh, talk about. So our redemption in Christ was brought brought us into righteousness. Jesus' righteousness has been imparted. All right? 1 Corinthians 1.30 said, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. All right? We have already read first, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, where he said, We made him who knew no sin, and all that, so that one might become, you know. So what was redeemed? Because that's where some people don't get it. That's what's confusing to a lot of people. When you say... Uh, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and we are bold about it. 
Some will say, hmm, hmm, hmm. See them. They are talking as if they are very close to God. Yes, we are. We are very close to God. See them. They are talking as if they already see heaven. Yes, we have seen it. Praise God. So what was redeemed? A good understanding of who you are will help you to understand this, what we are talking about. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and lives in a body. Praise God. I think a lot, all of us, uh, most people here should know that. Man is a spirit, okay? Okay, let's do some dem- demonstration. The three of you, can you come quickly? Okay, don't come off stage, just, just here. Praise God. Who looks very spiritual among them? Okay, Sister Faith. Sister Faith, they voted for you. All right, so Sister Faith, come to this side. The king boss is dark, so let him go to the other side. All right, very dark, so he can be body. So Sister Faith is spirit, brother Ade is uh, soul, and the king boss is body. All right? So man is a spirit, he has a soul, and lives in the body. All right, so when you gave your life to Christ, well, in Genesis 1, the Bible said, let us make what? Man in our image and in our likeness. God is what? God is spirit. So God is spirit. He gives birth to? He gives birth to spirit. So God, you are a spirit. We are, I am a spirit, for instance. Okay? I'm a spirit. I have a soul. And this beautiful, you know, you're seeing, is just a container. That's the body. This is not the real me. That's why when a person... A person dies. You can see the person in the coffin, right? You can see the body. But we know the real person has gone. The real person, the spirit has gone. But the body is there, just carcass. Come on. Try to say it's carcass. Somebody don't want to say that. Touch it, say it's carcass. And a lot of people pay attention to the carcass more than what is inside. Praise God. This is just carcass. You know, you know what carcass means? I, I mean, you know, those things that, you know, throw that cow, you know, people... Just carcass, you know. So, but some people, what that's what we do is the carcass we pay attention to than the spirit. All right. So, man is a, the person that got born again is this one. Who is this one? It is your spirit that got born again. This man, this soul, that one, they did not get born again. Is that clear this morning? Is that very clear? They did not. That is why after you got born again. You know, you got born again. You got born again. When you woke up this morning, you know, some people, they, want, they, they wish they were lighter in complexion. You know, I, I wish. Then they buy, let's leave that. Some wish that they are taller. I wish God made me taller. Okay? Some wish that they are slimmer. If only I can just be like Sister Sarah, you know? Some wish that they are like, um, you know? The next day after you go up on again, you are still the same thing. This body, this carcass was still the same because you didn't get born again. But your spirit that got born again has been changed, has been transformed. That is the person that got born again. So the Bible says, tells us in James 1.21, it says, therefore lay aside all filthiness, overflow of wickedness. Okay? James was talking to believers. I hope you know that. And he was talking about wickedness, filthiness, and all that. So he said, overflow wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. The word of God is the change agent that will begin to change this person and this person. To be able to come in line with this person. Praise God. So he said, receive the implanted word which is able to do what? Save your souls. So if they were believers, what else? Why did they need saving? That means there were some places that needed to be saved. This person and this person didn't get saved. Said, so that they will save your souls. And the soul is so important because that is where the decision takes place. Decision to lean to this one or to lean to that one, that's where it takes place. So be careful what goes here. Who is driving this man? Is it this one or this one? Thank you so much. So I do believe someone is getting something this morning. You know, now you understand the part that was saved. 
So you don't leave. You know, some people will say, oh, okay, they hear the grace message. You know, the, you know God has saved you. You know, God loves you no matter what. You know, and then they say, ah, okay, oh, that's fine. So that means it's a license for me to just do anyhow. No. No. Like I, I illustrated, if the soul and the body does not get in line with the spirit, you cannot maximize this life. Praise God. So what does righteousness do for a believer? Righteousness makes you, gives you access to God 24-7. Whether you have sinned, though, whether you are depressed, though, whether you have done something wrong, though, whether you feel, you are feeling God or you are not feeling God, anytime you have access to God 24-7. That's why Hebrews 4-12 says, what does it say? Let me see my Bible, people. Hebrews 4-12. I should come boldly. You know, we said define righteousness as, you know, you know, that thing, that empowerment that makes you to come to God without guilt, without condemnation, without anything. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Anytime. So obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Praise God. One scripture I particularly love when I give my life, when I, when I began to learn these things that spoke to me, Romans 5.1. He said, therefore, having been justified by faith, having accepted that gift of righteousness by being born again by faith, we have peace with God. Hallelujah. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have what? Access. Now I can come to God. I don't have time to begin to talk about the old kind of priesthood, you know, where the people cannot enter. It's only the priest that can enter. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. So the next thing, so the first thing that righteousness does for you, understanding of this righteousness does for you, is to understand that you have access to God 24-7 no matter what. You're always welcome. It gives you dominion mindset. Praise God. We read the scripture earlier, Romans 5.17. I will not read it again. But I'll read Revelation 5.10. Revelation 5.10 says, And have made us kings and priests, hallelujah, to our God, and we shall reign on this earth. We shall reign where? So why is it that when rat moves in your house, you jump on the table? Praise God. Rat, rat, you jump on the table. Hey, rat, oh, cockroach, oh. Where is your dominion, man? We shall reign on this earth. We reign over, you know, some time ago, um, maybe about a month ago, a lady sent me a message, you know, someone that came to church, a guest that I'm, I'm following up, sent me a message. He said, Pastor, do you people do deliverance in your church? You know, he says, your church. So I sent a message, but I said, hello, man, what do you need deliverance from? And I never got an answer back. Praise God. You see, people that talk like that, they exalt what the devil is doing more than what God has done. All right? God said, let's make man in our image so that they will do what? They will have what? Dominion. Yes, that dominion was lost when Adam sinned, but Jesus came and restored it back. Praise God. In Matthew 28, you said something to you said something to us. Of course, you said, you said, ah, Pastor, we were not there. He was saying to by extension to us, all the people that will follow him, all right, that believe in him. He said, All authority has been given to me. He said, therefore, go. He gave us that authority. He said, Go. In Mark 16, 17, I think he said, you know, in my name, you shall do what? You shall cast out devils. So, my brother, my sister, why are you afraid? Of, why are you afraid of devils? You know, ah, Pastor, in my I was in, last night in my dream, they were chasing me with matches. You know, blah, 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 blah. and, and, and ah, they almost caught me. Oh, but when I say Jesus, they didn't catch me now. And then it's an issue. Oh, yeah, they didn't catch you now. So, what's the issue there? Praise God. You 
have dominion to rule over the elements of this world, whatever it is. All right? You are kings and you are praised in this world. We are kings on earth right now, not later. Not later. We have authority over Satan and all his cohorts. Are we saying that there's no satanic operation? Of course not. That's not what we're saying. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, I'll be deceiving you and be reading you wrong if I tell you that Satan is not at work. The Bible also said it in First Peter. He said, he said, be sober, be vigilant. He said, your enemy, the devil, is going around. So you better know that there's a devil going around though, looking for who to devour. But your place is not to be cowering at the devil. Your place is not to be afraid of the devil. If believers will give energy, will give energy that they give to the chasing the devil, to knowing what they have in Christ. You see, the devil they know. The devil, I say the devil they know. Leave that thing. I've heard, I've heard testimonies of people that saw in the spirit realm, and then. I think it was uh, Pastor Joel Osteen that was talking about that. That, you know, says, some devils were looking for who to devour, of course. And they were going from, you know, going on the streets. They say, ah, so one small demon just said, ah, okay, let me go to that. I said, ah, don't go there. Come out, come back. Don't go to that house unless you want to die. They know there's something going on in the spirit realm. I read a book some years back. I think it was called The Avatar or something. It was written by one man that said he was second in command to the devil. You know, they all say all those things. But anyway, some of the parts of the book didn't, I didn't um, take, you know. But he, he, there was a story he told in the book that I remember. He said that at that time, uh, he was talking about how they operate. So this lady was going on evangelism. You know, those days when they used to go in the morning, they would carry bell and they are going for evangelism and, you know, and he was ringing and she was preaching and that demon didn't like it so he said okay today i'm going to i'm going to kill this lady all that was going on in the spirit realm so this man said he now watched as a demon approached the real lady wanting to pounce on her and then an angelic being just came and stood in the middle the lady had no idea of course so you better know it the bible said that he has given what his angels charge over us. Those are one of the things we have in Christ. So when you're going, stop being afraid. The angels of God have, cha- they got you baby. Praise God. Come on, say they got me. So why are you afraid? You know those prayers they pray in the bus where you want to travel. Those fearful prayers. Father, we pour a tanker of blood a bit of blood all over the road, all those things are nonsense. Praise God. He said, we, we, you spread. What will happen to the tire if there's a lot of blood on the road? You know, tire and wetness, they don't go together. So if you put up your trying to cause accident to praise the Lord, you know. How many of us, when you came to King's Ward, you felt that, and you might be here right now looking at me, you felt that these people. Why are, they, why are they so confident? Why are they so bold? Why are they so why are they talking like this? I mean, but I felt like that. My hands is up. I felt like that when I came to Kim. I said, ah, what's giving these people this kind of confidence? Why do they talk like this? You know? And then as I stayed and I began to learn, I learned that it was it's something called righteousness consciousness. Come on, say it's righteousness consciousness. It's not because they are, they are, you know, but because they know who they are. I know who I belong to. I know what I have. Praise God. Understand of righteousness imparts boldness. Praise God. It imparts boldness. My time is up, but can I, can I finish up? All right. It imparts boldness towards God. Boldness towards the devil. All right, I've talked about that. Proverbs 28 1 says, um, The righteous, the wicked runs when no one pursues him. But the righteous is as bold as a lion. So that's one of the why we are bold. You, has, you, you ought to be bold as a lion. One of the scriptures, like I said, when, before I gave my life to Christ, a lot of things were wrong. 
I used to be very afraid. Afraid of a lot of things. And there might be someone here like that. You just cover it up with good clothes, cover it up with, you know. I used to be afraid. Afraid of everything. Afraid, afraid I will fail. Afraid I will not make it. Afraid that good things will not happen to me. I, I was afraid of tomorrow, of the future. I was afraid of everything. Afraid of standing in public to talk. And all that were quoted in, you know, being by myself. So all those people that like to be there by themselves that you talk with, don't, don't, don't judge them too harshly. Oh. Some of them are afraid. They're afraid to come up. Until I saw this scripture, 2 Timothy 1.7. 1, 1, 7. He said, but God has not given me a spirit of fear. Oh my God. That is something. He said, so me, God has not given me a fruit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. Praise God. That scripture changed everything. Understanding of righteousness brings peace, confidence, and assurance. A guy used to, in this church, when we used to make altar calls very regularly, Every Sunday, he'll come to give his life to Christ. Every Sunday. You know, we stand here, so we see everybody that comes. Every Sunday, he will come to give his life to Christ. You know? And that, when I see him, I will just smile. And what is happening to him? There's no assurance of salvation. Okay? Every Sunday, come and give his life to Christ. So one day, Pastor, our pastor said, Say, Pastor Nkem, you know, at times like that, you will activate my assistantship. If there's anything like that, I say, Pastor Nkem, this guy, you need to deal with this uh, stuff. Okay, I say, yes, sir. So I had to go and talk to him and counsel him, and we talked and all that. So he stopped coming out. Okay, you are now understood. I explained all these things to him, and he now understood. And understanding that your righteous helps you to produce fruits. Okay, first of all, the fruits of the spirit, and then second of all, the fruit of holiness. Praise God. Because some people read it wrong that when we say all these things that you are accepted, that we are saying that holiness is now cancelled. No. So that, that takes me to the next thing. Don't confuse righteousness and with holiness. Like I said, when you got born again, what got born again? Your spirit man, your body didn't get born again. Your spirit man cannot be unholy again. Never. Praise God. Never. Because you have the spirit of Jesus. And Jesus cannot be unholy. Praise God. Your spirit man is perfect. You're perfect. And that's why God accepts you. But then your soul and your body are not born again. And they need to get in line with the spirit. So that's where holiness comes, comes in. A believer, let me come down for this. A believer that, that continues to sin and don't feel anything about it, something is wrong. All right? Something is wrong. Where is the Kinaisho? He's not here. Okay. The Kinaisho here. All right. All right. Please, please, can you come? I just feel that you'll be able to do what I want to do properly. Can I get a mic? All right. Just let's assume Dickie Naisho is my husband. Of course, you know he's not my, he has a wife already, so he cannot be my husband. He's taken, so he's not available. All right. He's my husband. And this is my husband, okay? I say, ah, honey, I need 10 million to start a fashion retail business. Can I have 10 million? You already have it. What's mine is yours. Okay. This mic is not on. Is it on? Check it whether it's on. Okay. It is on. Okay. What I have, what you have is mine. Yes. Good. Apart from that, what, why are you also expected to say, oh, 10 million, would that be enough? Let me give you 20 million. You know? <laughs> Okay, let's go again. Can right. I have 10 million? Are you sure that's going to be enough? Mm, maybe. Are you sure you don't want more than that? Okay, I can have more than that. Okay, so I'll do you a check for 20 million. Would that be fine? That would be fine. That would be fine. Thank you. I come back from work. 
you know, I'm tired. I say, oh, I'm tired. I can't cook. I'm so tired. What do you tell Come on, baby. You don't have to cook. We can eat out. Will that work? That will work. Good. Okay. All right. And then he goes ahead and draws a bath for me so I can take a bath. I'm, you know, because I'm tired. All right? You know. And then I'm giving you a picture of the kind of husband he is to me. You know, he's that good. He goes above and beyond. You know, he does everything. If I frown, he says, what why are you frowning? What's wrong? If I cry, he says, I ah, don't cry, you know, and all that. And then, and now Israel come. You know why I took him because of, he looks like a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, bad guy. All right. So, I now begin to, I leave my husband, he's not a bad guy, okay? So I leave my husband, and I begin to hang out with Israel. All right? I say, oh, well, I begin to hang out with Israel. Okay? I say, this is my guy now. What am I doing with that one? This is my guy. What will you call me? Pastor Eka. Okay, it's not Pastor Nkem you are talking to. It's not just the Nkem in the example. Just use it like that. Hey, call that Nkem in the example. Ungrateful. Ungrateful, that's one. You still do the same thing and ingrate. You play using nice words. Come on, tell me what you really think. What you really. I'll say foolish. Foolish. You're not content. Oh, you pull up, you very holy. Tell me a, the real thing you feel, because me, I know what I'll call that person. Incontentment. You bless me speaking nice grammar. Do you like I get something? You are stupid. That's that's more like it. Any other person with something else like that? <laughs> You don't want to call me. It's not me you're calling names. All right. So that's what happens when a believer delights in committing sin. You see, everything God has done, that Jesus has done, all those awesome things he has done, if you go ahead and begin to go back to the old life that he has saved you from, you understand we read, we read that scripture that he has saved us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his death son in love. And then you go ahead and begin to hang out. Thank you very much. Hang out with sin, as usual. Like Jola said, you're stupid. You're foolish. Because the consequences of sin does not get cancelled. Because you're a believer. What I mean, I mean the physical consequences. Sin cannot separate you from God. Let's understand that. It does not because, you know, you remember we say your spirit is, you know, your spirit is perfect, it's sinless, it has the spirit of Jesus. So God accepts you. That's why the prodigal son could go back to his father. And the father, the Bible tells us he ran and he ran and he ran. He didn't wait for him to come in. I went and embraced him. Why? Because he had right standing with him. But do you know he suffered the consequences of his sin? He was eating pig food. Praise God. He ate big food. He ate, he, he ate all kinds of things. He went through a lot. So even if not for anything, for that, for that. So does someone appreciate what Jesus did in the house this morning? And if you appreciate that, if you appreciate that, come on. Just imagine it's just like that husband that goes above and beyond. He gave his life. He shed his blood. He died an excruciating death just to make sure you are accepted. And the reward you give him is to live anyhow? No. No. You know, John said something in First John. He said that a, a person that's born of God that has it cannot sin. You know, I, I meditated on that scripture. Try to understand, cannot sin. How many of us have seen that scripture? He said he cannot sin because the seed of God is in him. How many of us, since you gave your life, in fact, forget about it, you gave your life to Christ. Since last yesterday, you have sinned. Me, 
day I, my hand is all poor. Ah. Ah, there are some liars in this house. Too. And that is a sin in itself. <laughs> all right. So what? what? <laughs> okay, let's settle something. It's a sinner is not a sinner because he commits sin. A sinner who is somebody that has rejected the sacrifice of Jesus. Okay? A sinner is a sinner because he has refused to accept the lordship of Jesus. Okay? As a believer, you're not a sinner. You cannot be both. Praise God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you can be a sinner. But you can be a believer and commit sin. And the, the, another translation of that scripture I quoted, it said, the person that born of, does not make a practice of sin. If you make a practice of sin, why will you not make a practice of sin? Because you have the Holy Spirit. You have your conscience. If you see the Holy Spirit, say, mm, that one is not, you didn't do well. You didn't do right. And then in 1 John 1, 9, then there's a provision there. He said, if we sin, that, 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 uh, uh, that we can come and receive forgiveness. Praise God. But you don't make a practice of it. You sin because you did it inadvertently. But you don't delight in, because the seed of God in you, the seed of God in you will not let you. It will not let you make a practice of it. It will not make you be comfortable with it. Praise God. So holiness is still very much important. So, have you, come, have you understood the difference between righteousness and holiness? So, how many righteous people do I have in the house this morning? All right. But if you're not born again in this place, you're not yet the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, as, as, when I give an altar call now, you need to get born again. And as you get born again, that righteousness will be imparted on you as well. Praise God. So, you can go ahead, go ahead and live your life bold. Go ahead, go ahead and live your life with, with dominion. With a dominion, I think it was the gift. So he said something about dominion mindset. You have a dominion mindset. Why? Because you know that God has got you. Praise God. And that doesn't mean endorsing sin. Like I say, holiness is the fruit of righteousness. All right. One last scripture. It says First Peter two nine. It says from the Amplified. I'm going to read from the first verse nine. It said, "But you are a chosen race." A royal priesthood. You know royalty, they, they don't do anyhow. Uh, you know Prince William and... Uh, what, what, what are their names? Prince William and... What's the, the wife's name? And ha Harry and... No, Harry, I mean, Harry has rebelled. And Catherine. And, you know, this, you see, there's a way they conduct them. So there's some things they can never be caught doing. Why? Because they are royals. And you are a royal. Praise God. You are a king. There's some things that you shouldn't be. There's some things kings don't do. It is too demeaning. It's too small. You are a king. That's what the Bible says. You are a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. God's own purchased people, special people. You are special for goodness sake. Don't treat yourself as if you, are, you don't matter, as if you are nonsense. You are special. So why did he make us all this? So that we may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues, virtues, I'll say that again, and perfections of him who called you out of darkness. Again, we are seeing that. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. So have you been convinced now that you cannot live anyhow? Your right standing with God does not give you a license to live anyhow. Praise God. It just empowers you to live well. Praise God. It's an empowerment. So receive that empowerment today. Know that today. That you are a king. You are accepted. You are loved. You are the righteousness of God. And what does that mean? It empowers you to be all that you can be in Christ. So put away sin consciousness and begin to embrace. You know, is this sin consciousness that make people sin actually? It's sin consciousness. When they say things like, ah, we don't know who will make it all. So because they're not sure, they're not sure of themselves, they don't, they just don't feel, you know, so, you know, I remember, uh, uh, you know, um, those earlier days when I first came to this, this uh, state, you know, sometimes we think Lagos is a city, it's not a state. We, when I first came to this state, and I was homeless, praise God, 
So I said, ah, somebody is not praising God. Because I said I was homeless. I'm not homeless again. Praise God. Yes, I was homeless. I was sleeping on the floor in a church auditorium. That's where I used to sleep. All right, so um, the key bodies of our church, the church where I was going to at that time, no offense to our key bodies. And he called me one day. He said, he said, my sister, don't you have a man, you know, a man that can help you, be helping, be giving you money, you know? That is a believer trying to advise me. You know, if the man, have a man that will be giving you money so that he won't be suffering all this suffering. Have you gotten such advice before? They might not be like, don't you have a man? They will tell you something else. You know, there's a place you can go. There's something else you can do. And I looked at him, I said, this one, keyboardist, Peter, no offense to you, keyboardist of our church, tell him, giving me this kind of counsel. Oh, well. And actually, I did have a man, the man Jesus Christ, praise God. I did have a man, and it was one that brought me out of that. Praise the Lord. You know, they tell you something like, make, make sure when the trumpet sounds, God does not find you in a compromising position. How many of us have been that, uh, heard that? See, how can you say once saved, always saved? Do you not understand why once saved, always saved? Because some people can't answer that. Because you understand who was saved and what was saved. So that's always saved, actually. So if you are here and you have a problem, accepting that you are righteousness of God and you still go around with a sin consciousness, what you are saying is that what Satan did, because you understand that you are a sinner because of what Adam did, you are saying that what Satan did, it, it surpasses what Jesus did. And I hope nobody is saying that in this place. Finally, finally. Hebrews 9, 11. He said, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve God? How much, what is he saying that? How much more does that blood give you a righteousness, consciousness? Praise God. So like I said earlier, it is a whole, this is a whole class in KTI. You know, you can't ask me questions now. I'm sure somebody has questions. You can't ask me. But when you go to KTI, you can ask questions when these are taught. So ask questions in your mind. Okay? You can actually ask me questions after service if you have a question. And if I can have available, I will answer you. But go there, you answer, you answer that question. They will, they will ask you questions. So KTI starts this Saturday. So please, if you have not attended, please go and attend 9 a.m. in this place, in those, uh, that other building on the other side. All right. When you're seated, just bow, bow your head. Let us pray. I wanted to begin to talk to God about what you have heard today. Sometimes as believers, we lose these truths. We, we lose these truths. We don't practice them. They're no longer real. So we talk to God say, Lord, give me a full understanding of what I have in Christ so that I will live in the reality of who I am. So I can live in the reality of what I can, I have, and what I can do in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for making me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now I can dominate and reign in this world. Nothing dominates me, not even sin. So I reign, I reign in my field. I reign in my family. I reign over sickness. I reign over principalities. I reign over powers. I am a royal priesthood. If you are here in this place and you have not been made the righteousness of God, you are not born again. Please all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you are here like that, you are not born again. All these things we are saying is news to you. Can you just slip up your hand where you're seated? Lift up your hand, let me say it. You're not born again. 
you can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus this morning. Praise God. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for your word that came forth to us, O God. Thank you, O God, Holy Spirit, because you take this word and make it real in our lives. Let there be transformation. Let there be empowerment. Let there be a turnaround. Let's go out there. Help us to use this to dominate, to be all that we can be in Christ. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen.